Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel Legal Decipher. In the previous video, we had talked about Chapter 21A of the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973. If you have not seen that video, you can go and check it. The link is in the description below. Today, we are going to talk about Chapter 22 of the Code of Criminal Procedure. We will go through the chapter and try to understand how the criminal courts work and how the criminal procedure code is followed. So if you are new here, you can like and subscribe to my channel to get video notifications. So let's get started. So today we are going to talk about chapter 22, which deals with attendance of persons confined or detained in prisons. So this chapter is about the attendance of those persons who are confined or detained in the prisons. Attendance to where? Attendance to the court. So this is a tiny chapter. Let's move on quickly. Section 266 talks about the definitions that are in this chapter. It says detained includes detained under any law providing for preventive detention. So detained as we know from the dictionary meaning it means to confine a person or restrain a person into a particular place and it includes under this chapter any detention that is under any law provided for preventive detention. So what is preventive detention? We will read about this when we go through constitution of India. For now we must understand that the preventive detention means any kind of detention that is used for preventive measures so that situations regarding any person who is so detained does not deteriorate. Now let's talk about prison which includes any place which has been declared by the state government by general or special order to be a subsidiary jail. So we already know what prison is. Now in this chapter it also includes any place that has been declared by the state government by any general or special order to be a subsidiary jail and any reformatory borstal institution or institution of a like nature. So all these are included in the term prison. Now let's move on to section 267 which talks about power to require attendance of prisoners. So whenever in the course of an inquiry, trial or proceedings under this code, it appears to a criminal court that a person who is confined or detained in a prison should be brought before the court for answering to a charge of an offence or for the purpose of any proceedings against him or that it is necessary for the ends of justice to examine such person as a witness then the court may make an order requiring the officer in charge of a prison to produce such person before the court answering to the charge or for the purpose of such proceedings as the case may be for giving evidence. So what happens is that say for example an inquiry or trial is going on under the provisions of the code of criminal procedure and it somehow appeared before a criminal court that a person needs to be produced before it. For what purposes? For the purposes of proceedings against him or answering to a charge of an offence that is framed against him or for the ends of justice to examine such person as a witness. So in all these cases the court that is holding such trial or inquiry will require production of such person before that particular criminal court and for that reasons the court may order officer in charge of a prison where such person is detained shall be ordered by that court to produce such person before the court for answering to such charge or for the purposes of such proceedings for giving the evidence where an order under such subsection 1 has been made by any magistrate of the second class then it shall not be forwarded to or acted upon by the officer in charge of the prison unless it is countersigned by the chief judicial magistrate to whom such magistrate is subordinate. So if such order has been passed by the magistrate of a second class, so second class magistrate does not have the power to directly require the officer in charge of a prison or to make him act upon such order unless it is countersigned by the chief judicial magistrate. So what will the magistrate of the second class do? 
he will first pass the order and then he will counter sign it by the cjm and then only the officer in charge of the prison will be forwarded such order or he will act upon such order now every order that is sent to such chief judicial magistrate under subsection 2 may after considering such statement decline to countersign the order so the cjm has the power to decline to countersign the order he may not sign that order he has the power to do so now section 268 talks about power of state government to exclude certain persons from operation of section 267 so the state government may at any time having regard to the matters that are specified in subsection 2 by general or special order direct that any person or class of persons shall not be removed from the prison in which he or they may be confined or detained and thereupon no long as the order remains in force no order made under section 267 whether before or after such order of the state government shall have effect in respect of such person or class of persons so let's understand this simply say for example the state government has passed any general or special order in regard to the matters that are specified in subsection 2 and it has directed that a certain person or a certain class of persons will not be removed from the prison in which they are confined or detained and thereupon so long as the order remains in force that means as long as that order is in force no order made under section 267 for such removal of that persons from such prison will be entertained and that order shall not have any effect in respect to that person or class of persons now before making an order under subsection 1 the state government shall have regard to the following matters so what will the state government regard to it will regard to the nature of the offense for which the person or class of persons has been ordered to confine or detained in prison the likelihood of the disturbance of public order if such person is allowed to be removed from the prison and the public interest generally so these three things will be taken into consideration by the state government regarding that particular order the nature of the offense the likelihood of the disturbance or the public interest in general now section 269 talks about officer in charge of prison to abstain from carrying out order in certain contingencies so this section covers up all those contingencies in which the officer in charge of a prison will not comply with such order or he will not carry out such order so what are they it is by reason of sickness or infirmity unfit to be removed from the prison so if the person who is to be so removed if he is found sick or infirm and unfit to be removed from such prison or he is under committal for trial or under remand pending trial or pending a preliminary investigation or he is in custody for a period which would expire before the expiration of the time required for complying with that order like taking him out of the prison and then again taking him back to the prison or if he is a person to whom an order made by the state government under section 268 applies so whether that person is excluded by the state government so in all these cases the officer in charge of a prison will abstain from carrying out such order and these are the contingencies that, that will make such officer in charge to abstain from carrying out such order provided that where the attendance of such person is required for giving evidence at a place not more than 25 kilometers distance from the prison then the officer in charge of the prison shall not so abstain for the reason mentioned in clause b so if the person who is detained in that prison is to be taken 25 kilometers away from the prison that means the place where such person such accused person who is detained in that prison if such person is to be moved for 25 kilometers only not more than 25 that means that place where he has to reach is within 25 kilometers of that prison then in that case the officer in charge of the prison shall not have to abstain from the reasons that are mentioned in clause b so that reasons will not apply here this is the proviso that is an exception now section 270 talks about prisoner to be brought to court in custody 
so whoever is brought before the court shall be carried to the court and shall be kept in or near the court in custody until he has been examined or until the court authorizes him to be taken back to the prison from where he was brought so the person who is required to be moved from such prison before a court that has required his production the person that is so moved the offender will be kept in custody in or near the court now section 271 talks about power to issue commission for examining the witness in prison so the provisions of this chapter shall be without prejudice to the power of the court to issue under section 284 a commission of the examination as a witness of any person who is confined or detained in a prisons may be done and the provisions of part b of chapter 23 shall apply in relation to the examination of that person on commission in the prison as they apply in relation to examination on commission of any other person so there is also a provision that is section 271 which allows the person who is so detained in that prison to be examined via commission so that's all in this video if you like my videos then don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching this video Thank you.